With that said, we have a written statement and we have the statement that was released on Collision. Should we just play the audio? What do you think? I, th I think the, the written statement is a little dry. The audio is, is what's, to me, so entertaining. So, Jim, a couple of weeks ago with everything that happened with Cash Wheeler, people tuned into AEW Collision and there was no reference of it. Things just continued on and still have on AEW TV. This time with this, this being such a big story and word breaking, the statement was issued, I believe, 4.33 and, p.m. Well, and, and, and by the way, he uh, also broke precedent because there was never anything mentioned on television about the first brawl last year. It was never discussed, ever. He never named who were suspended, right? He just said the champions, yeah. their titles are vacant. Yeah, so this is breaking precedent on advice of his legal team preparing for war. So less than four hours before this is when the statement went out on Twitter and through various social media sources, I assume. But here is the way AEW Collision on TNT opened up. Today I had to make one of the toughest decisions of my professional career. Today I terminated Phil Brooks, CM Punk, for cause. This stems from a backstage incident at AEW All In last Sunday. The incident was regrettable and it endangered people backstage. That includes the production staff, the people who help put the show on every week, innocent people who had nothing to do with it. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. I've been producing them on this network for nearly four years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. I don't think anybody should feel that way at work. I don't think the people I work with should feel that way. And I had to make a very difficult choice today. It came at the recommendation of a discipline committee here in AEW, <laughs> as well as outside legal counsel, who delivered a unanimous recommendation. And I have followed up on that recommendation. I'm sorry to any fans who are upset by this. I'm sorry to anyone who's upset by this. Despite that, we're going to have a great show tonight on Collision, and we're going to have a great AEW All Out pay-per-view tomorrow here in Chicago. Last weekend was the greatest weekend in AEW history. This is the greatest week in AEW history. We're going to continue the great momentum here tonight on Collision and tomorrow night on All Out pay-per-view. Well, there's the, uh, the hey, statement. Hey. Take a drink every time he uses the word cause or the word great, and in 90 seconds you'll be crocked. Well, cause was certainly put there by the lawyer, so over and over again he's saying he had a reason to fire CM Punk. Yeah, and, and that, that's what, for cause, uh, is a, a term that can be used legally. It's like, he's the one that fucked up, we had to do it, right? But that's, that's our defense. And... Now Go ahead. I was going to say, Tony also tried to give a very similar statement in front of the live audience in Chicago at the United Center, and very similar phrasing. Obviously, there were terms and phrases that he was either told to memorize or told to say or remembered from the cue cards. I don't know. But instead of 90 seconds, because he wasn't reading it off the teleprompter, it took him about six minutes also because the people were booing him out of the building like the hunter that killed Bambi's mother. And he sat down in a chair, and I believe it was six minutes in total. Six minutes of that while the people were booing him. Like Spalding Gray with no self-awareness. It, first of all, the discipline committee, not even the disciplinary committee, but the discipline committee. AEW has a discipline committee. First, we've all heard of it. Has anybody ever been disciplined before? And who is on this discipline committee that made this unanimous recommendation? Is it Megan? Is it Maddie? Is it Nikki? Is it Jack Perry is on the discipline committee? Who knows who it is? Because there isn't one. They made it up for this occasion. And <laughs> then he said, I feared for my, not only I feared for my life, but my production people, the production, like Punk was back there with a goddamn hockey stick, waving it over his head like a helicopter blade screaming, I'm going to take all you motherfuckers with me. He snatched a fucking jerk and put a face lock on him. How is that going to harm the production people? Which of the production people has he been known to threaten or been uh, observed threatening? Did he pull 
uh, some type of projectile firing implement out from his tights and was firing at random rubber bands or fucking those little discs he used to shoot out of the plastic guns or whatever the case and say it was going to put somebody's eye out the only production person we ever heard that got maybe a minor injury with that guy Topher in the original all out locker room brawl he was the guy in there no one ever named him or anything but he got I think like some scratches maybe so the point of what in the fuck it's like that he's talking about a full scale gang fight. Nobody was going to get hurt that wasn't involved in it. Tony may have been scared, but I don't really think that punk would have knocked him out. I think he would have told him off, flipped him off because this is all Tony's fault. Again, to go back to that, whether punk is right or wrong about any of these things or whether you agree with him or not, it's all Tony's fault. Tony allowed all this to happen. He let it all fester. He wanted it to happen at times. And if you're frustrated coming off a week where I'm just thinking about how I would feel if I was punk, the meetings canceled, the meeting that potentially could lead to company, not saving, but company some, revolu business. some resolution, resolution of the issue, resolution, and also potentially something great for the company. Quite frankly, that gets canceled the last minute you fly to London. You think there's going to be someone there for you. There's no one there for you. Turns out someone who's friends with the Young Bucks runs that department. Interacts with a lot of fans on the way there. No one's had a bad story about that. You get there. You're a gorilla. You're watching the monitor. Because what else are you going to do? You talk to Samoa Joe a little bit. You guys know what you're going to do. You're watching the monitor. And there's Jack Perry looking right into the fucking camera <laughs> saying, Real glass, cry me a river. You're like, what the fuck? Right then and there? If I was CM Punk, that's when I turn to Tony and say, what the fuck? Seriously. He may have. He may have. We don't know about that part because would he have gone over and leaned down with Tony with his headset on? And would he have said, what the fuck is this fucking little jerk doing? Because it's not just about Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy is a part of their locker room. Yeah. He's one of their, their prime stooges. If anything happens, he's on the fucking he phone. texting Kenny right away. Yeah. So the question becomes, why did he feel comfortable enough in doing that or to do that? They know how volatile CM Punk is. We all know that. Whether you take his side or not, you kind of know what to expect. You had to know what to expect if you were Jack Perry. He felt comfortable enough to do that because he knew whose locker room he was going to be in. And, uh, you know, basically, again, Tony's sitting there. Tony should have been meeting. If Punk called it to Tony's attention, let's say Tony was at the monitor but didn't see that particular thing. Somebody else is whispering at him. If Punk called, called his attention to it, Tony should have been the first one to meet Jack Perry coming through. But he's not going to do that because he's not going to fucking tell anybody when they do something wrong. And if, if Tony saw it, then he should have been the first one. But same thing. So it's left again to Punk to go, all right, this little fucking prick. Not even a goddamn guy that allegedly is being presented on my level, but just some mid-card fucking goof that thinks he's hot. I'm surprised he didn't just fucking drop him when he came through. By the way, I'm watching now. I had not seen this. You retweeted it, actually. Very Shawn Michaels 1997-esque. After Collision went off the air, the Young Bucks went out for a victory lap? Yes, I somebody in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, somebody tweeted that that here it's apropos of this is how CM Punk's run in AEW ends with the Young Bucks taking a victory lap in an empty building. 